These streets in East London were once home to about 200,000 Jews at the beginning of the 20th century, many of them facing religious persecution and economic turmoil on mainland Europe and Russia. Now that number has dwindled significantly, but there are still remnants of the past. We take a walk down memory lane to discover the history of London's Jewish East End. Echoes of a bygone Jewish era still reverberate throughout London's East End. Now home to trendy bars, cafes and clubs, it once housed about 200,000 Jews in the beginning of the 20th century. Many were forced to flee Eastern Europe due to economic hardship and persecution. We take a walk through memory lane with our guide Phil Walker, who hosts Jewish East End Walks. Among some of the highlights on this whistle stop tour of what was once the heart of London's Jewish community was Sandy. I first discovered this synagogue about 10 years ago when I was on a guided walk of the East End, Jewish East End of London. And I came in here and it was it just kind of opened up into this fantastic and gorgeous interior. And the gentleman who was showing me around said to me, do I notice anything special about the interior? So I thought, yes, I do. Everything's very, very orange. And he said, do you know why that is? So I said, um, I'm not sure. So he then told me that this synagogue was founded by Dutch Jews, um, 1854, I believe, and the national color of Holland is, of course, orange. Sandy's Row is London's oldest Ashkenazi synagogue with a stunning interior and seemingly original fixtures. Trevor Marshall is the Secretary of Marriages. Sometimes when you talk about the East End to people who live in the suburbs, it's sort of, sort of oh, I don't want to talk about that. Um, they were bad times. Um, we were never that poor. Um, we could ne my family could never have been that poor. Um, but the reality is rather different, and there may be a bit of self-denial here. So um, it, it's good that we keep this flame burning so people can see what, what, what Sanders Row is, what it represents. Next, we headed to the Jewish soup kitchen for the poor. Soup kitchens used to be all over the East End of London, and they were very, very necessary. People didn't have food to eat, they didn't have shoes to wear, the poverty was unbelievable, and there was no welfare state to pick up the, uh, the remains, to, to, to lift people out of the gutter. So these institutions fulfilled a very important purpose. On Middlesex Street is still home to Kossoff's Bakery, where you can pop in for a salt beef bagel. Next door is Jewish tailor Stanley Lee, who offers bespoke tailoring for men specializing in formal wear and legal outfits. Lastly, we finished at St. Botolph's. Although it's Church of England, it features some Jewish influences and one particular local boy who made good. For Marcus Samuel, you can see here, he's now as a spectacle maker. He was a Lord Mayor of London, and his family, and he in particular, founded Shell Oil. But the family themselves are of very, very humble origins. And they started out in this area with a, a curio shop selling seashells. Victorians loved seashells. And so when he discovered the benefits of kerosene, which became oil, the symbol of his, of his newly founded company was a shell. It's walks like these and members of the Jewish community that is keeping the past very much alive today. I'm Cindy Martin for JN1 in London.